Hey everyone, so this is a detailed guide to the enhanced encounter window module or extension. If you haven't seen the overview yet, video yet, you probably should go watch that. This is only for those who want more detailed instructions on how to do all the different stuff and uh, some more examples. So I uh, will start off with the uh, creating a new encounter. So you, you can create new encounters you know, the old way as well using this plus arrow. Um, this is just here for convenience, so don't feel like you need to use this. You can also open existing encounters or encounters you've created in the past and work with them from there. Uh, so, you know, this is just a, one way to do it with the new encounter button. Uh, in the overview video, you probably get a good idea of how most of this stuff works. I'll just go into some more specific details here. So the first thing I want to point out in terms of uh, you know, the details is you can add any image to, as a map or as an image, um, because as you know, Fantasy Grounds are kind of all treated the same here as, as maps. Uh, where you drop it is going to impact which one it goes to. And also, um, when you drop these things, if you want to change them, right now there isn't a way to just simply delete it. Uh, I'll probably get that working at some point in the near future, but I'm struggling with it and didn't want to hold off too much longer on releasing just because of this one thing. Because even if even though you can't delete it, you can still easily replace it. So if you decide you want to change the image, you can just drag a different image there. And sometimes you might run into this situation where you drop something and the text disappears. Uh, if that happens to you, you can just close it and reopen it, and then you'll be able to see what it is and, again, drop and change things around. Uh, and you can always click on it to open up the individual item. And that works for all these things uh, the same, basically. Uh, you're only going to be allowed to put the certain kind of object in each one, so I can't drop an image. Uh, inside the encounter area or the start story area, so it's going to be a little specific, uh, specific on those. The sounds, uh, as I briefly mentioned, you'll, you'll need the Sirenscape extension by Matakure to use the sounds area. At this time, that's the only kind of sound object I'm supporting. Uh, and if you do have that installed, you can drop sound items and you'll get to them. Uh, you know, if you have Serenscape installed, you'll see a separate type of library item here. When that's available to you, you can use those to drop those in that section. And then it will all work just like normal with the, um, the extension on its own. Uh, so you have to go you know, to that to find more details on that process. Uh, what else is going on here that I can get into more detail on? Um, so the challenge rating, you know, this is only, it's only going to refresh when you click on the uh, refresh button. So keep that in mind as you add things around uh, just don't forget to hit that refresh the future the future i may change it so it's sort of out of updates but there's some not just technical challenges but logistical sort of questions about whether that's the right thing to do or not um, so i'll be waiting to hear feedback from people uh, but you know in the meantime you just remember to hit that refresh and if you end up locking this it's going to work the same way the old encounters do where you can't really make edits to the most stuff uh, while it's locked Exception is you can still drop stuff into the um, the side areas even when it's locked, but you'll need to unlock it to change the challenge and stuff and change player or NPCs. So let's talk a little bit more about the button functionality. So as I mentioned in the overview video, um, there's a series of buttons here, and they uh, they each you, know, you can use them independently or you can go through sort of a sequence of common scenario actions and that's kind of the intention behind this is that in a lot of cases you're going to end up basically starting by adding the combat tracker and wanting to open up the map if it's not already open if it is already open uh, it's not going to do anything uh, bad it'll just sort of bring it to the front and this won't, it won't actually share the map with the player yet at this point so if you decide you want to share now before you've added stuff to the map and before you've made uh the creature is visible. You can still do that just the old-fashioned way, you know, doing the share option, right? Um, but I think a lot of times, if you're doing theater of mind, or if, unless you're already on a pre-planned map, what you're going to end up doing is uh, adding them out here like this, and then you, you know, arranging how you want them to be out there, and then, and again, you see, there's a lot of stuff added here, not just three things. It's an important detail to remember. It's actually going to add everything in the combat tracker. Um, for logistical reasons, it won't be able to just add these three things. So you got to make sure you keep your combat tracker clear uh, in between fights, which is just a good thing to do in general for a lot of reasons. Um, but um, you know, if it does add things you don't want, you know, obviously that's not a big deal. You can just delete the, the old things from the tracker uh, to get rid of them. 
and you can actually delete everything and re-add them all if, it's, if you run into that kind of situation to, to make it easier on yourself. Oh, actually, I guess you can't do that. Uh, you, oh, yeah, there you go. I have to do that again to add them. There we go. So you, you have to re-add them in that scenario, and then you can enter them out. Now, if I had already placed these guys, so let me go ahead and remove them again. Now, let's say I previously had placed things on the map. Okay, and now I go ahead and let's close that down. I add them to the combat tracker with that button. You'll see that they're located in the spots that I previously placed them. So in this scenario, there's really not a reason for me to use the second button, right? This is only if you haven't placed them on the map. So I can skip over that in this case. And then you have a couple options here, right? So if you want to share everything with the player at that point, the map and any image you've got here, I don't know what I added here, uh, and then the image of the NPCs, you can use this button. Uh, which you see is shared this, it also shared this, and it would have shared the map as well, which previously maybe wasn't shared. If you don't want to share all these things at the same time, or if the you know, creatures aren't visible yet, so you don't want to share the, you know, their location or their images of the players yet, then you just don't use this button. Um, you can just still, you can just share the map, you know, the normal way, um, like that. And then after you reveal stuff, you could then hit this button and it's, they've already shared the map. It's not going to you know, do anything problematic there with them. It just will stay up front, and then they can see the images that they need. And if you want to share individual things, of course, you can just click on the image and share that as well. So you yeah, don't feel like you have to use all these buttons at all the times. They're you know, situational, um, you know, whether you're going to want to use them all or not. Uh, in terms of the XP, so this is pretty simple. Uh, I mean, essentially, just anytime you hit this button, it's going to add to the list of counters. It won't, you know, award it yet. And keep in mind, though, you got to be careful that if you hit a bunch of times, it's going to keep adding it there. Uh, so even though you may, if you have this closed, you might not see any action happen, uh, but it's still adding it. So just be careful of that. And then when you hit the award XP, it's going to award not just that one XP or encounter, but anything that's in this row and unawarded. And also keep in mind, it's only going to award XP based on the value that you have up here. So you have to hit that, that ref uh, um, refresh to make sure you have an XP variable, variable going. And the reason why I, I thought about automatically calculating this, but I didn't, because some people may want to actually adjust the XP manually. Like they might want to actually give something different than what it calculates it to be. Uh, and if you do that, then it will send that value instead of the 6,000, whatever. You can see how that worked. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think that's pretty much everything. I, I'm sure someone's going to run into some weird situation. Uh, I guess, okay, actually one thing that comes to mind is what if you have your tokens on multiple different maps? Uh, you know, that's kind of, I think, pretty rare situation. Uh, but if you were to do that, it's going to actually go on whatever the first map um, for the first NPC that has a token on a map. So let's say the Abolith was on a different map than the Acid Trap, and you tried uh, you know, sharing, opening that, and then sharing the maps. It's going to go with the one that the Abolith is on. Um, so you know, if you run into that situation, you'll just have to open up the other map, um, or you can actually add a secondary map in the image space if you wanted. So you have two different maps. That's another useful thing you might do. Um, but uh, just be aware of that situation. Again, I don't think many people are really setting counters up like that, so probably not going to be a problem. Um, other than that, um, I, I expect I'm going to have some new releases and not too far in the future that do some minor cleanup things, like the way the little text is kind of covered up a bit here by this until you expand and collapse. I'll probably get that straightened out uh, sometime in the near future. So if things, tweaks like that are bothering you, don't worry, I'll, I'll get them fixed eventually here. Um, but, I do, you know, it's 99% functional, so I didn't want to uh, you know, hold back for weeks to the little things. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. Again, as always, if you have questions or feedback or ideas, feel free to reach out to me. Just please make sure you go to my Discord, the Mad Nomad Media Discord. The link's in the README channel. And uh, that's about it. So I hope you guys enjoy and hope this uh, makes your games run a little smoother.